So Thanksgiving is over, we're less than a week from December, and Advent is about to begin. That means the Christmas season has officially started. Spirits are high, and I'm not going to let any pagans, Muslims, Jews, or Protestants ruin my mood. And Christmas has always been my favorite holiday, even when I was a degenerate atheist. Um, of course, like, I love the gifts, but it was always more than that. It was, like, the movies and the music and the decorations and... There was always like this transcendent feeling of the Christmas spirit where everyone just seemed nicer and happier. I just, I always loved the Christmas season. And then once I became Catholic, my love of Christmas deepened even more because now I understand and celebrate the true meaning of Christmas, which of course is the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's okay to enjoy the other aspects that come along with Christmas, but we need to always put the true meaning of Christmas first. It's easy to get sad about how commercial it's become and how it's been secularized to do nothing but profit elites, but we must not let that make us fall into despair. Christmas is a Catholic holiday, and no matter what ways they try to pervert it, that will never change. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the history of Christmas and correct some misconceptions. I know it might be a little bit early, but I will be in Christmas mode from now until January 2nd. So firstly, we're going to talk about the idea that Christmas is just a Christianized pagan holiday, which it's not true. But even if it was, so what? The majority of Christians were pagans before converting. So it would only be natural to appropriate their previous held traditions to their new Christian beliefs. But concerning Christmas, it's actually not true at all. There were pagan celebrations of the winter solstice, but Christmas was always a unique nativity-based celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. A lot of people say that it was just an adoption of Saturnalia, which was a pagan feast to the false god Saturn. And this, of course, leads dumb people to claim that Catholicism is like another Saturn-worshipping cult and the Black Cube and all that stuff, but this is all false. Saturnalia was originally celebrated between December 17th and December 23rd and started around 220 BC. But if Christmas was an appropriation of that, there would be some sort of reference to this by early church fathers, which there are none. Not to mention that the dates don't even align. Another false theory is that Christmas is actually a pagan celebration of Sol Invictus and Mithras, which was established by Roman Emperor Aurelian. Some say Christmas is actually celebrating Mithras' birthday because some believe it was December 25th. But the problem is that the feast wasn't annual, nor is there any historical evidence that it was even celebrated on December 25th. But the death blow to this theory is that the earliest mention of any pagan feast relating to this being celebrated on December 25th is found in the chronography of 354, which is the calendar and chronological order of events from the year 354. This calendar also mentions the celebration of Christ by Christians, meaning there is no evidence that any pagan holiday celebrated on December 25th came before Christmas. And there is an actual reason why December 25th was chosen to celebrate the birth of Christ. Now, of course, we don't know the exact date that Christ was born, but we know that Christians were celebrating the birth of Christ since at least the 3rd century. Just just not on the same day. But the reason that December 25th was chosen is because of the writings of Hippolytus of Rome, who speculated that Christ was conceived on the anniversary of creation, which he believed to be March 25th on the vernal equinox. I have no idea what that means. But anyway, so nine months later, Christ would have been born, which would be December 25th. Nine months from March 25th is December 25th. So Christmas became officially recognized on December 25th in the 4th century under the first Christian Roman Emperor, Constantine. So that's how Christians first started celebrating the birth of Christ, and that's basically how the first Christmases happened. Now, as far as certain things like the Christmas tree being appropriated from pagan traditions, um, there's some truth, but it's not as simple as that. Evergreens have been a universal symbol of hope, resurrection, and everlasting life associated with the winter season across various cultures going as far back as the ancient Egyptians. But Christians began using evergreen wreaths as decoration as early as 190 AD. The Christmas tree as we know it now, though, didn't become a thing until the Protestant Reformation. So there's really nothing wrong with using Christmas trees. I personally love them. But if you are against them, don't be against them because they're pagan. Be against them because they're Protestant, which is just as bad, arguably worse. Now let's talk about Santa Claus, which of course has been perverted into a secular mascot for parasitic capitalism. But in actuality, Santa Claus is based off of a Catholic saint, Saint Nicholas of Myra. He was a Greek man born in 280 AD to wealthy Christian parents. When they died, he sold all of his belongings, dedicated his life to the service of Christ, and used his inheritance to give to the poor. One time, there was a poor man who couldn't afford dowries, which were payments the bride's family would pay to the groom, so his three daughters were destined to be forced into prostitution. Saint Nicholas heard of this and wanted to help, but didn't want the recognition out of modesty, so at night he hid under a cloak and snuck up to the house and threw a purse filled with money through the window, saving the girls from that horror. He did this three times, and the third time the man caught Nicholas and began thanking him, but Nicholas made the man promise he wouldn't tell anyone. This and various other acts of gift giving and kindness, usually done anonymously, would later contribute to his mythology. Saint Nicholas then went on a pilgrimage to Egypt and Palestine, then when he returned he became Bishop of Myra. He was an attendee of the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, where legend has it that during a dispute concerning the nature of the Holy Trinity, heretic Arius from Egypt was teaching that Jesus was not equal to God the Father. 
This angered St. Nicholas so much that he ran across the room and slapped Arius across the face. St. Nicholas was stripped of his bishop garments and chained in a cell. Jesus and Mary then allegedly appeared to him while he was in the cell and gave him the Gospels. When the guard came to see Nicholas the next day, the chains were loose, St. Nicholas was back in his bishop attire and reading the Holy Scripture. The guard told Emperor Constantine about this and St. Nicholas was immediately released and fully reinstated as Bishop of Myra. St. Nicholas died on December 6th in the year 343. Over the following year, stories of his gift giving and generosity towards the poor spread across the Christian world. One legend is that years after his death, he appeared to a boy that was kidnapped into slavery and brought him back home. St. Nicholas became known as the protector of children and was celebrated as a saint within a century after his death. Then he was officially canonized as a saint in the Catholic Church in the 800s. Then in the 1200s, many Catholics began celebrating Bishop Nicholas Day on December 6th by sharing candy, small gifts, and riddles. It became common practice for children to leave their shoes out with carrots in them for St. Nicholas to come and leave gifts. In places like Belgium and the Netherlands, a man dressed as St. Nicholas would ride a white horse through the towns handing out gifts. Dutch immigrants then brought the legend of St. Nicholas to America in the 1700s. They called him Sint Nicolas, or his nickname Sinterklaas, which of course became Santa Claus. The legend went through many iterations in America, originally still celebrated on St. Nicholas's feast day of December 6th, but then it eventually became closer to what we know today by two main things. One was a poem written by Clement Clark Moore in 1820 called An Account of a Visit from St. Nicholas, where he describes him as a heavy jolly man who comes down the chimney to leave presents for good children and drives a sleigh pulled by reindeer. And then, in 1881, a cartoonist named Thomas Nast drew a picture of St. Nicholas wearing a red suit with white fur trim, and thus began the character of Santa Claus we all know today. Also, candy canes were based off of St. Nicholas's staff. So despite how commercialized Christmas has become, and while we may enjoy some of the modern things associated with Christmas, it's important to remember that Christmas is about celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, and that even the newest additions to Christmas mythology is originally derived from Catholic tradition. So no matter what they do, Christmas is and always will be a Catholic holiday.